Today's card is going to be a little bit complicated. This is not the finished item. These are just a few bits that are needed to make the card, but it is going to be a little bit complicated. So if you're going to make it, take it slowly and think about what you're doing as you're doing it and don't rush it. Take a bit of time and it's not as difficult as you think it might be but the results should be pretty good at the end of it. I'm hoping that they will be anyway, because I've not finished this card yet, but I know what I'm going to do with it. All right, so from the top layer, we have here a piece of card for which I have cut out um, the shape of a bottle. I admit at the moment, the shape on this bottle needs a little bit of work on it. I'm not happy with it, but this is a prototype, so I will amend the file. And I have drawn a few little rocks underneath and colored them in with Copics. The background was done with an airbrush, but you could do it with distress inks or whatever. It's just designed to look a little bit watery, that's all. Now, if you look at the other side of this card, this is where it gets complicated. <laughs> and I have lots of bits of foam over it. Now, if you see this piece of card, this piece of card slots into here. And that's the reason for all these bits of foam. You need to stop it going any further down. You need to make sure it travels up and down in a straight line. And you need to stop it from wiggling around here, which is why I've got the foam just there. You can't put foam here because if you do, it won't pull up. Now, under this, I have some acetate. It's just something that I cut down to fit. And I've done that for a specific reason. This is cut so that it's only ever so slightly bigger than the hole, and I didn't want it wiggling around or popping out or anything else like that. But also, it's designed eventually to look like a glass bottle. Not a particularly brilliant glass bottle, this one, but that's the general idea. So the fact that it has something which is reflective, like glass, on the front is fine. Now you notice I have a bottle cap which I have stuck on to this bit. There is a hole there, it is cut out as a, as a complete bottle. And I literally just stuck that bottle cap onto the front and I've continued the, um, the adhesive strip down the side there. So this is how that would go. Now when you set this up, what you want to do is to make sure that this piece covers the hole, then turn it over and draw a line where it needs to go and then you can fill in with your foam. Okay. So the next piece is this one, which again was cut out as the bottle, but I've just covered that little, little bit there with some of the backing paper for the moment. And the idea is that this is going to form a front panel in its own right so that when this tab is pulled you end up with a window okay so in order to get this sorted out I also want to put foam on the back now it doesn't matter where you put it on here you just want to completely cover the back I haven't because this is a prototype and I don't want to waste the materials basically so completely cover it you can even cut it out with your uh, die or your cutting machine if that's what you're using so that it's the same size, but it needs to go on the correct side because if you put it on the wrong side, you'll then find, for example, that you're trying to fit this bit with this and it's not working properly, okay? So make sure you know which side you are putting your adhesive on because that is going to go onto the next piece, which is the backing. And there's a reason for this because not only is this going to be a slider card, it is also going to be a shaker card. So eventually this will join on to this as a panel. This will have some bits put into it and then that will go on to there. Yay! And then the whole lot is mounted onto a normal card front. Okay, so. Let's see if we can get a handle on this and start it off. Make sure it is round the correct way because you don't want to put your painted side or your colored side where it shouldn't be. 
and make sure you have that position so you can flip it over and join the two up. I'm just going to take that tiny bit of backing off of there so I won't need it any longer. And the most difficult bit is going to be lining it up and putting it in place without getting it in the wrong place. That is my major problem. And of course I can't actually pick it up and do it because if I do this piece will move. So it has to be done on here. Right, there we go. So this bit needs to go corner to corner and down that and I've got it slightly off. I can tell that already. Drat. Let's take this up again. I'm going to have to stand up, I think, in order to do this because it's going to get in the wrong place otherwise. I'm just going to make sure that this is still in the right place. And maybe if I stand up, take the glasses off, I'll actually be able to do it correctly. Won't that be nice? And actually, no, I need the glasses on for this. Ah, oh, the wonders of having bad eyesight, hey? Now, it's definitely not going to be very easy to do. Okay, I think I'm going to have to stick my head in front of the camera. So I'm going to stop here and restart that. Okay, so I've got this piece stuck onto the front now. And with the wonders of editing, I suddenly realized I'd put the foam around here and I hadn't put my acetate sheet in in order to contain the shaker that I'm intending to put in. So with my glue, I'm going to put this acetate sheet on. Now I can put glue just there if I need to because that's going to be covered regardless. But I'm just going to use some silicone glue because silicone glue is quite good with plastics and acetates, it sticks it quite well. It doesn't take too long to dry. Okay, so I can put that on there and put my acetate sheet on because if I hadn't done that it would all be coming out of the window. Duh. I don't know. There are some times when I wonder if my brain cells have all died. Right, now I can put the rim around with the foam tape. So I need to make sure that I don't go over the window, obviously. And I want to make it as close to the window as I can so that I don't end up wasting a load of sequins and things going behind areas where they shouldn't be. So that's why I want to be careful with that. But I don't mind the odd one or two going into a corner. That's okay. I can tolerate that. Just don't want to waste masses of them. Let's see if this piece of foam is salvageable. I think it is just about. No, maybe it's a bit too wide to go in there, so I'll cut another piece off. And where's my foam tape? Okay. Where is it gone? Ah, oh, there it is. Whoops. Just picking up spare fish while I was at it. You'll understand in a minute. Okay, let's make sure this isn't too wide. And any bits of tape that I don't use, I just stick back onto the reel because the chances are I'll be using them in a moment. And I will be using that bit in a moment because I didn't cut it quite long enough there. There you go, I said it would come in handy. And I can put another piece in there as well. Okay, right. So I have my window, which has got the acetate on the front. And then this bit is where all the various sequins and what have you are going to go. And then I can put the other side of the panel on. So I have various things here and I've just picked out a few of my stash of sequins and things. But I've also got some cut out, print and cut little fish. And I do love the silver bullet because just look how accurate that print and cut is. It's lovely. 
so I'm going to put some fish in as well. Um, need to make sure he's up the right way. Don't want his eyes facing down, do we? That would be a bit silly. And I've got this one as well, so maybe I'll put him in. I think he looks quite nice. And what else am I going to have? Maybe I'll have a little crab in here as well. Pick up a little crab. Now obviously I need to make sure that they're facing the right way, otherwise you won't be able to see them, which would be a bit silly. And what else am I going to have? Do I have any fish or not? Have I got some tiny ones? No. I think actually that will probably do for the fish. Let me just have a quick look by turning it over. Yeah, I think that will probably do for the fish. Okay. So I'm going to put in some sequins now. Just do up my glue. And I've got a different, I've got a range of different colour sequins, but I decided these are probably the ones that I want to use. Try not to make them go everywhere, but they frequently do. Now these, whoops, this stuff is just like a bits of coloured cellophane stuff cut out, which I got the other day, but they add a lot of glitz. Yay! And you know me, I like a bit of glitz every now and again. And I want some of these darker green ones. Oops, try not to get them on my tape. All those bits of cellophane paper stuff are really static and they stick to your fingers like mad. And I've got some sort of purpley blue ones as well. So I think you'll have a good pinch of those. I think that'll probably do it. <laughs> I don't want to overload it. In fact, I will put another fish in. I can't resist. Another little fish. Right, so we have all that there. Catch an escape sequin or two. And now I should be able to put my backing on there. Now, I'm not going to do this on camera because I know I'll mess it up if I do because I need to be directly overhead. So I'll see you. Right, I've got my card set up now so that I've put it on the back as well just to save time. Um, it's just done with double-sided tape. So the result is that you have the bottle which opens up when you pull the tab and then you have a shaker behind that with the sequins, a fish and the crab inside. So a fun card and I have made this one especially for a friend of mine who wanted some inspiration for a young lad's seventh birthday. So this is what I'm coming up with. Now I've not quite finished it yet. We still have a few finishing touches to go so I'm just going to make sure we're in focus here and go for the finishing touches. Now I've got a banner which I thought was quite a good match for this type of card and it just says happy birthday now this I have cut out from vinyl in fact the um, the happy birthday is cut out in vinyl and it's put on top of a background but you could just write it on you could print it and cut it or indeed you could stamp it on there and you could emboss it if you wanted to but that's just the way I've chosen to do it and I think I'll put it a little bit raised up so I'll just get some little bits of the double-sided foam and put those on and I'm hoping my friend is going to approve this one although she might tell me off because I've done some freehand drawing she might say I can't do the freehand drawing yes you can it's only a few stones it's just scribbles really that's all it is with a bit of clever colouring. If you're really stuck, I'll do a video on how to do that as well. 
Right. She knows who she is. <laughs> I'm a design guru, you see. Right, okay. So we have our little happy birthday. And, whoops, my Y's come adrift. Gosh, that never do. <laughs> Talk about drunken sailors. Okay, press that on. And I think that looks fine there. Okay. Now, I have some other bits and pieces that I want to put on. I'm not sure if I'll be using this one. No, it's a bit big. Um, I do have a treasure chest. No, I don't think so. I think I'll just settle for some more of the fish, because I think those are fun. I think they're quite nice, these little fishies. Shall I put one up there, I wonder? I'm going to use, if I can find them, uh -huh, my little uh, embellishment things here that I made out of some insulation tape. Or at least I might do. It might be a little bit high. Maybe not. I'll try it and see. Perhaps I'll use one of those for the, um, the little crab that I've got here. Let's see what that's like. Yeah, actually, I quite like that. Okay, so it's only sticky on one side, so I do need a bit of glue on the back of it. In case you're wondering how I did those, I punched them out with a hole punch, just a single hole punch, and that worked out really well. I was quite pleased with that. Okay, so we have him there. That's a nice bit of dimension, that does. And I'm going to use a smaller, a, a shallower piece of uh, dimensional foam, the normal dimensional foam, I should say, on the back of one of these fish. And work out where I'm going to put that. I'll make sure his eye is facing up, not down. You don't want to do that. That would be a bit silly. Okay, I'm going to put it up there, I think. And, oh, the other thing I do have is a little compass. I think that would be quite a good one to have on one of these little dots. So, okay, whoops, knocking my glue over, that won't do. Okay, so, put one on the back of there and a dab of glue. Just a little dab. If they're too high, you can always squish them a little bit. They will squash down. But I do like the fact that they throw shadow. It's really quite effective. And I don't want one of those fish. I want one of the other fish. I've also got something that looks a little bit mean. Perhaps? Mm, no. Okay, it's a bit too big. Um, I think I'll go for one of the multicolour fish that I've got here. So I did all these with print and cut. So I think I'll put him on one of the higher dots. There we go. Need some glue on that. So some of them were actually double sided because I put some double sided tape on the back of them before I cut them and some of them I didn't. So, oops, didn't want to stick. Perhaps I didn't put enough glue on. There we go. I'm going to go in that way I think. And I think we'll have one of the little fish and I won't put him quite so high up. Put it on a normal piece of foam. Oops. And should we have him hiding or should we have him peeking out from there? I think we'll have him peeking out from there. 
There we go. I think that is almost it. I'm tempted, I am very tempted to put some little diamante bits on. Hmm. But maybe I will and maybe I won't. I haven't made up my mind on that. So we'll see. I'll leave that. I'll have a think about it. I'll leave it for a little while and think, decide whether I want to do that. But there we go, our shaker card with our slider. And I think any child would be quite happy to receive that and quite a few adults as well. <laughs> I think I would. I think I quite like that. OK, thanks for watching. I will actually amend the file. I'll try and make that bottle a bit better. I'll amend the file and I will post a link for the file for you as well. Take care now.